In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a dynamic day and night system for your games in Unity. The only asset that we're going to be using is the Polygon City Low Poly 3D Art by Cinti. That being said, let's get started. You'll see here that we have an empty scene and all it's got is a main camera and a directional light. Taking a look at the scene view though, you can see that we actually already have a sun in the sky. What's cool about this is this is actually connected to our directional light, specifically which way it's facing. So if we go ahead and adjust these rotation numbers, you'll see that the sky color and tint changes. We'll be using this for our daytime visuals, especially for the sunset and sunrise. To do this, we're going to create a new script. As always, I'm going to put it in my empty scripts folder, and I'm going to name it Day Night System. And you could put it on top of a parent game object. We're just going to put it onto our directional light. Now let's go ahead and open that up in Visual Studio. Now to get the ball rolling, the first thing that we're going to do is create a public float and call it Rotation Speed. And then in our update function, we're going to say transform.rotate new vector 3. And for the parameters, it's going to be 1, 0, 0. And we're going to times that by rotation speed and then times time dot delta time. All right, we can go ahead and save that and head back into the editor. Once there, we're going to go ahead and change the rotation speed to something like 20, just so it's nice and fast. And then jumping into play mode, you'll see that we have a nice sunset. Now this works great, but you probably don't want to rely on your day length based on a rotation speed. So instead, we're going to set the length of the day based on minutes. To do that, we'll go back into our script and we're going to say public float day length minutes. And we're actually going to change our rotation speed from a public variable to a private variable and drop it beneath our day length minutes. And then in our start function, we're going to say rotation speed equals 360 divided by day length minutes divided by 60. Above everything, we're going to make a public float and we're going to call this one current time just so we can check on things. And at the top of our update function, we're going to say current time plus equals one times time dot delta time. And once we save that, we'll see that it updates, and now we can change the day length in minutes, and we're gonna make ours 0.5 minutes just so we can see it work. And if it's at 0.5 minutes, that means it should take 30 seconds for the sun to reappear right where we see it now. And now we see that it works. Now we're gonna see how this scene looks with some game objects inside. The first thing that we're gonna throw down is a plane bring it into the camera view, and then we're gonna go into the Polygon City Pack, which I talked about earlier, and we're just gonna grab one of these buildings. After putting it on the plane, we see that we already have a weird shadow problem. The easy way to fix this, go into the mesh renderer, go to lighting, cast shadows, and set it to two-sided. After we fix that, we're just gonna flip it back around for the rest of the video. All right, now jumping into play mode, you can see that as the sun goes down and then comes back up, the sun hits the building long before the sunrise ever happens. Now this doesn't look too bad right now, but if you were to build out an entire outdoor scene, it'll start to look really, really weird. Make sure that your mesh renderer on your ground object is also set to two-sided. After you test that out, you'll see that now we have a good sunrise. Now as great as this all is, we're gonna wanna know what time it is. So we're gonna create a new UI text object. I only ever use Text Mesh Pro name it time text, and we're just gonna give it an outline just so that we can see it. Be warned that this outline will affect all of the text that share this font. Jumping into our script, we're gonna go up to the top and say using TM Pro, and then beneath our public float, we're gonna say public text mesh pro UGI, and we're gonna call it time text. We're also gonna go under our float rotation speed and we're gonna create two new floats. One's gonna be called midday, and the next one is gonna be called translate time. And then we're gonna go into our start function under the rotation speed line, and we're gonna say midday equals day length minutes times 60 divided by two. In our update function under our current time line, we're gonna say translate time equals current time divided by midday times two. Make sure you put the parentheses in the right spots. The next thing that we're gonna do in our update function is make a float, call it T, and it's gonna equal translate times 24. Then we're gonna make another float, it's gonna be called hours, and it's gonna equal math F dot floor T. Now, just so that we can see this in action, we're going to say time text dot text equals hours dot two string. Then we're going to make sure that this is set to our text mesh object. And the last thing to do is test this out in play mode. We'll know it works if when current time hits 15, that our clock is set to 12. And there you go. Works great. You'll notice that we're currently on the 13th hour. And that's because one problem that we do have is that our clock is set to 24 hour intervals. So we're gonna fix that. The other thing that we're gonna fix is that we start out at zero. Technically speaking, the day starts at 12 a.m. Unless you're using military time, which in that case, this is already fine. So in our update function, we're gonna make a string and we're gonna call it display hours, and it's gonna equal hours dot two string. To fix the zero hour, we're gonna say if hours equals zero, then display hours equals 12. 
And now instead of time text dot text equaling hours to string, we're going to say equals display hours. To fix the primary issue, we're going to go beneath that and say if hours is greater than 12, then display hours equals hours minus 12. And don't forget the to string. Save that, and then we're going to test it out in play mode. And awesome, you see now that it works. Now let's add an AMPM function. To do that, we're going to go back into our script, go to the top, create a string, call it AMPM, go beneath our last if statement, and instead of constantly making time text equal to something else, we're going to make a string display time, and it's going to equal display hours plus AMPM. And then we're going to make a new if statement, and it's going to say if current time is greater than or equal to midday, go into that if statement. And we're going to say if AMPM is not equal to PM, then it's going to say AMPM equals PM. Go under this and we're going to make one more if statement and it's going to say if current time is greater than midday times two, which means a whole day has passed. So set current time to zero. Go above that. And then we're going to say if AMPM is not equal to AM, then AMPM equals AM. And we should have done this earlier, but now we're going to say time text dot text equals display time instead of display hours. Last thing we're going to do is go up to the top and make sure AMPM is by default set to AM. Save this and let's go test it out in play mode. Before we test it out, we're actually going to make sure this looks like midnight, so set the rotation of the directional light to negative 90. And there you go, it works properly. Now we're going to go ahead and add minutes to our clock. Jumping into our script, just to make things a little more simple, we're going to go ahead and close all of these if statements. And we're going to create a new float, call it minutes, and it's going to equal math f dot floor t percentage 60. Above that, we're going to say t times equals 60. And for our minutes, if it's under 10, we're going to want a zero in front of the number. So we're going to go beneath our minutes line, and we're going to say string display minutes equals minutes dot to string. And then we're going to create an if statement, and it's going to say if minutes is less than 10, then display minutes equals zero plus minutes dot to string. We're going to go to our display time string, and instead of saying plus AM PM, it's going to be plus quotations colon plus display minutes plus quotation space plus AM PM. And then testing this out in play mode, you'll see that everything works great. Now we're going to make our night sky a little more interesting by adding a moon and the stars. For the moon, we're just going to make a sphere, make it a child object of the directional light, set it Z to 40, and then we're going to increase its X, Y, and Z scale to 5. The reason we made its position this is because the sun should always be facing the moon. Now when the night comes and the moon comes out, it's going to have a shadow on it from the plane, but we don't want that. So just go onto the moon's mesh renderer and then turn its receive shadows to off. And for the stars, I have a giant inverted cube with the star's texture on it, which you can find both the mesh and the material on our unfinished website, link in the description, which we're going to place into our scene, reset its transform, and then make it a child object of our directional light. And if you use the star's asset, make sure the texture type is set to bright 2D and UI, and double check the alpha source to be input texture alpha, and that alpha is transparent. Okay, so we don't want stars in the daytime. Easy fix. If you go to the star's material, you'll see that it's a standard cutout material, and because of that, it has an alpha cutoff. Now if we set this alpha cutoff to 1, all the stars disappear. If we make it 0, it becomes just a blank white sheet. A good balance is 0.2, in which it just looks like a very starry sky. And now we can adjust that in our script by going onto the top, go beneath the public text mesh pro thing, and say public material stars. And now we're going to go under our if hours is greater than 12 if statement, and say if current time is greater than or equal to midday divided by 2 and current time is greater than or equal to midday times 1.5 and this is just saying that if it's between 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. go into this and we're going to make another if statement and it's going to say if stars dot get float quotations underscore cutoff is less than 1 then create a new float call it alpha equals stars dot get float quotations underscore cutoff times 100 f and this is just so we don't have to work with decimals go beneath that and say alpha plus equals 3 times rotation speed, that way it's based around how long or short our days are, times time dot delta time. Go beneath that and say alpha equals alpha times 0.01f, which will make it a float again, which is what we need it to be. Go beneath that and say stars dot set float, quotations underscore cutoff, comma, alpha. Then go to the parent if statement, and we're just going to make an else statement, and then copy and paste what we just made into it. The only thing that we're going to change is instead of less than 1, we're going to make it greater than 0.2, and instead of plus equals 3, we're going to say minus equals 3. Save that, go back into the editor. Okay, make sure that on the directional light you drag in the star material. And now we're ready to test it. And then after you hit play, you'll see that it works. Okay, so the last few things that we can edit is we can actually change the sky's look as well. 
How to do that is we go into our material folder and we're going to create a new material, call it Skybox. Make sure you get the procedural one. Drag it into our scene. And then you can just adjust the values to your liking. You can also resize the sun. The other thing that you can do to make the scene more interesting is put the directional light on its tilt. Now of course these last two things are to preference. And that's about it. What's cool about this system is because it resets the clock based on a complete day, you can actually go back into the script, go into the if statement that says if current time is greater than or equal to midday times two, go to the bottom and you can increase a day count and use it to create an entire month and year system. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section. We try to answer as many as possible and we'll see you next time.